Hello everyone, inventory is the oxygen of merchandising businesses. Merchandisers, they buy and sell inventory. That's their core operation. Therefore, inventory is a critical aspect of their business. In this session, we would look at how to account for inventory and determine its cost. We will see that inventory, not just the purchase price, we need to determine the full cost of it. And why is this important? Think about the merchandisers. They want to sell the inventory and make a profit. In order to make a profit, you have to determine your cost. We need to know what's included, what's excluded, because we need to allocate the cost of that inventory to various inventory items. Think about companies like Walmart, Costco, your local supermarket. They pay one price for many items. How do they allocate this cost to the various items? Now, in the real world, this is a tricky business. In this session, we would look at basic rules. We would also revisit the concept of FOB shipping, FOB destination, goods on consignment. We would also look at the internal control for managing inventory. At the end, we will work a multiple choice question. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by looking at items, at key consideration that we have to take into account when we are handling, when we are counting, when we are accounting for inventory. So it's not only about determining the cost associated with inventory, that's important. But we have to be aware that inventory encompasses, it includes all goods a company owns and hold for sale, regardless of their location. What does that mean? At some point or sometimes, a company may not have the inventory on site. However, they have to count that inventory. And sometimes they might have inventory on site and it may not be their inventory. To manage inventory, we have to ask questions. We have to understand what is truly our inventory. Inventory that we own and hold for sale. We don't have to have it on location. So there are three things we have to learn about in order to resolve this issue. One is goods in transit. Two, goods on consignment. Three, damaged goods or obsolete goods. So we're going to discuss each one of those separately. Why? Because they will determine our final inventory. And that's important. How do we determine our inventory? First, goods in transit. And we touched upon this in the prior recording. So if we have goods in transit, in transit means what? It means we purchased some good. It means there's a buyer and there's a seller. That's fine. Well, the buyer is going to buy the goods there's, and the seller is going to deliver the goods. The question is in between, in between. And this in between could be five minutes, could be five hours, could be five days. Think about when you ship something from Europe in a plane or you ship something from China that takes a month in a boat. Or think about going down the store and buying something. Well, that's goods in transit. How do we determine whose good is it? So the question is, whose good is it? Whose inventory is it while well, it's in transit? Well, it all depends on the terms of the shipment. What's the term? What did we agree on? If the terms are FOB, free on board, don't worry about what FOB is. If it's shipping point, when goods are shipping point, the buyer assumes ownership of the goods as soon as they are shipped. So we're going to assume this individual is the buyer. Okay? If this individual is the buyer, if they visit the seller, so the buyers drive their van, drive their van, this is the van right here, they, they drive the van and they pick up the goods. As soon as they pick up the goods and they put the goods in, the, in this van, in transit, 
it's the buyer's inventory so if the shipments are shipping goods in other words the buyer is paying paying means what means taking responsibility they can drive their own van they can hire a third party they can send one of their employees it doesn't matter if it's shipping point as soon as it, as it leaves the seller and in, it's in the possession of the buyer it's the buyer goods now in between it may take a day it may take five days it's the buyer now we're gonna change the terms we're gonna assume we're gonna assume that this is the seller so the seller is putting the goods in this van and the seller is delivering the goods this is called FOB destination if it's FOB destination the seller retains ownership of the goods until they reach the buyer so let's assume this is the seller and the seller will need to drive this van from Pennsylvania to Florida guess what from from Pennsylvania to Florida there's depending where in Florida there's at least 12 to 13 hours drive anything happen to those goods they're the sellers good until those goods are received by the buyer in Florida because the seller is responsible now the seller don't have to drive the goods the seller can simply hire a third party so these goods remain with the seller during transit so make sure you know the difference between FOB shipping FOB destination because we're gonna see later on that counting inventory is very important the other topic that we need to deal with is goods on consignment goods on consignment basically uh, you know uh, what what is it it's basically someone placing goods with you to sell it for them so you're not buying the goods they're placing it with you a case in point the best example I can give you from the real world is Walmart and PepsiCo PepsiCo is PepsiCo the beverage company guess what PepsiCo they place they place goods at Walmart all what they do they tell Walmart don't buy the goods we're just gonna place the goods on your shelves and once you sell the goods take a small fee and give us the selling price so here the consignor retains the ownership of the goods until they are sold here we're talking about PepsiCo PepsiCo is the consignor it's the owner of the goods these goods should be included in the consignor inventory so PepsiCo they will count the goods as part of their goods although they are sitting in Walmart they're not they are, they don't have physical access to them the consignee the seller which is in this situation Walmart sells the goods on behalf of the consignor but does not owe, owe them now what does that mean it means when they count the inventory they don't include they don't include the goods that PepsiCo have for them they will not include this so what does that mean it means when you're doing an audit or when you when you are counting the inventory especially when you're an auditor and I used to go you know face these situation quite often when you're doing an audit you ask you ask the retailer you ask the company that you're auditing do you have any goods on consignment and if they say yes the next next question is identify them for me I want to know what they are so when I count the goods I am not including them damaged goods or obsolete damaged goods is clearly straightforward the goods are damaged damaged means what it means somehow they are uh, they are not in 100% perfect sellable condition so if something is damaged what do you have to do if you purchase if a retailer purchased an item for a hundred dollar then this item is damaged let's assume a table now the cost is a hundred dollar however if they can only sell this table now for sixty dollars because it's damaged they have to report this item at net realizable value which is the selling price minus any cost to complete the sale assuming it's sixty dollars so we have to look at damaged goods so we cannot keep reporting this table at a hundred dollar it's damaged then we have obsolete goods what's the difference between damage and obsolete damaged goods are goods that you can see physically that the goods are damaged obsolete goods they're no longer useful or sellable like outdated software think about if you still have Windows 95 CD-ROM of 
Windows 95. They might be worth something. They're <laughs> they're antique at this point, but if you do have them, they're they're still might be in good condition, 100% good condition. The CD-ROM is still in good condition, but they're obsolete. No one's gonna buy them from you. Guess what? Write them down. Write them down to net realizable value. Take the loss, and sometimes you might have to, to take the loss for zero. So those are the three things we have to take into account when we are counting inventory. So when we are counting inventory, when determining the cost, we have to determine the appropriate cost. And we're going to see why later. You're going to see what does inventory affect. The cost of inventory include all expenditure necessary to bring the items to a saleable condition and location. Here's what to consider. First, the invoice price. What you pay for that item is important. Then you have to take into account any discount. Any discount received is deducted from the invoice cost. We'll work an example. Other costs that could be included in inventory, think about it. Shipping. If you're buying for shipment, if you're paying for shipping cost, you add that shipping cost to the cost of the inventory. Storage. If you have to store these items, you add this. Insurance while in transit or in storage, if you're paying for insurance premium to insure the items, to make sure they are protected, they added to your cost. Any taxes you pay, any import duties. What are import duties? Taxes that are paid to import to bring something from overseas. All of those are additional costs that are added to the invoice cost. Obviously, discount is a minus. An example would be, Let's assume you purchased an item for 200. That's the that's the invoice cost. You receive $10 discount. You're going to deduct that from the $10. You incurred the $20 in storage, $30 in insurance, and $10 in port duties. This item cost you $250. This is the total cost for that item. Also, when you're counting uh, inventory, and this is one of the best internal control. What's internal control? Internal control is protecting your asset. We're going to talk about this later on in a separate recording. But internal control are policies and procedures to make sure your asset are protected. Your asset are protected. So one of the best internal control for inventory is to count. Is to count the inventory. Why? Because you want to count the inventory to determine whether the inventory is in good condition and you still have the actual inventory. What if it went missing? Theft, shrinkage, lost, damage, obsolete. You want to count the inventory. So companies implement internal control and perform re regular physical counts to verify that inventory listed in the books in the computer system matches the actual inventory on hand. Now there are certain practices for counting inventory, such as pre-numbered inventory tickets, independent counters, verification, multiple counts, managerial oversight. We're going to go over each one of them briefly and give an example. What's a pre-numbered ticket? Use uniquely numbered tags. You tag each item or tickets to track each item and avoid double counting. For example, if you are counting pallet of goods in a warehouse, you tag each one of them with a pre-number inventory ticket. For example, if the warehouse has 500 pallets, each pallet is tagged with a unique number ranging from 1 to 500. So during the inventory count, the counters record the quantity of items on each pre-number ticket. And what would, what would this system do? It will help track each pallet and avoid the risk of double counting or missing any pallets. Did we count them all, the 500? If a discrepancy arises, the specific pallet can be easily located using its unique number. You want to have independent counters, and this is a very important internal control for companies when they're counting inventory. What's independent counters? Independent of what? Independent of handling the inventory. Assign people who are not involved in handling the inventory to count, to count the inventory. So, Let's look at a retail store. When they do their annual inventory and assign tasks to employee, they will do so for the inventory, bring employee from different departments who are not involved in day-to-day -day inventory handling. Why? So the people that count the inventory should not work in the inventory. For example, staff from the finance department are tasked with counting the inventory in the electronic section. Why? Because these employees do not interact with the inventory, they provide unbiased and accurate count. That's one thing. 
two, which is important, is they have no incentive to miscount the inventory. They have no incentive, in, in other words, to lie about the count of the inventory because they don't handle inventory. Because if they lie, they have no interest because they cannot change the record. But if you let the people who handle the inventory count the inventory, they will steal the inventory, change the record, and tell you everything is good. Also, their lack of familiarity with the inventory reduce the risk of intentional or unintentional errors because they're looking at it from a different perspective. They have no biases. But the most important thing about independent counter is they have no vested interest because they're coming from a different place, different department, to miscount the inventory. Always you want to do a verification. Count teams should check and confirm the existence, quantity, and condition of the inventory. So when you're counting the inventory, you don't only count, you make sure it's there. So if it's a box, you might have to open the box, count the items inside the box, look at their condition, verify everything. In a pharmaceutical company, after the initial inventory, the counting team verified the record by physically checking the existence, quantity, and condition of each item, or they might sample to make sure everything is there. So if the initial counts records 50 boxes of a specific medicine, the verification team physically inspect and recount the boxes to confirm that 50 boxes are indeed present and in saleable good condition. Any discrepancies are noted, investigated to ensure accuracy. You might have to do multiple counts. Conduct a second count by a different team to make sure accuracy and consistency. For example, a retail store schedule multiple counts to ensure accuracy. For example, the store inventory team conducts an initial audit or initial count of all the genes in the store. Later, a different team recounts the same genes. And if there's any discrepancies, one team counted 150, the other 148, we want to come up with a solution, recount or check in for any misplaced item until we get to the correct number. And managerial oversight is critical in this process. Managers should oversee the counting process, review the result, and resolve any discrepancies from any multiple count. For example, the plant manager walks through the inventory section, observing the counting process, and reviews the count sheet for accuracy. If any discrepancy are noted, they will have to step in and resolve the issue. Also, the manager will have to verify that the final count against the inventory record and ensure that counting procedures, what we did, what we talked about, were followed, pre-tagged items, multiple counts, verification, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. When are goods in transit included in the cost of the inventory? Simply put, when the goods are between the buyer and the seller there's a time this is goods in transit it's on the way this could take a day this could take a month it could take six months whose goods is it is it the buyer or is it the seller well is it when is it included in the cost of the inventory what when are goods included in the cost of the inventory in other words with the buyer because the inventory is the buyer part the buyer is buying the inventory is it when the goods are shipped fob shipping point is it fob destination is it when the buyer is offered a discount i would say the buyer offered a discount does not make sense whether you're offered a discount or not has nothing to do with the ownership at any point not at any point it depends on the shipping terms whether it's fob shipping or fob destination so which one is it is it FOB shipping? Is it FOB destination? We have to know the difference. In FOB shipping point, it means the buyer is paying, the buyer is responsible, the buyer takes ownership. So if it's FOB shipping point, this is our answer. The goods are included with the inventory. FOB shipping, FOB destination, important in your accounting courses, auditing course, business law that topic will appear again and again and again fob shipping fob destination it's also important in the real world it's it's a term that's used anyhow what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice true false resources that's going to help you that's going to help you do what to help you prepare for your financial accounting courses, CPA exam, 